What is up guys, we're back with another episode. Finally, I'm back in Fontana again. It's a nice day out here with my man, Black Rob over there, say hello Robert. Hello. And what do we have for you today? Well, the title said it all. We have an ATI damper we're gonna go ahead and install on Robert's B14. I have one for the P11 as well that I'm gonna be installing later, but I'll let Robert be the guinea pig first. There's already one on my motor for my B13, but my car's not drivable, so. We're gonna mess with Rob. I peer pressured him into buying an ATI damper as well. So we're gonna get it on his car. And for you, those of you who may not know, here's the part number. You can go ahead and order that. I ordered mine through Summit Racing. Rob ordered his through Jegs. And we got it here in a couple weeks. There was a little snafu back order, but you know, we got it. It's all good. So if you guys don't remember, Rob is on a SR20 VE. Uh, with N1 cams and pretty much every mod you could buy He just got a couple DMs uh, <laughs> And he has this Brembo brake package, but Rob already started before I got here pretty much it's, the install is pretty straightforward What we ended up doing is uh, well Robert already took off the main belt Which is the one that goes to the alternator, but the ATI pulley is actually larger than the stock pulley the stock V pulley so more than likely we're gonna have to test out some belts and make sure that they fit. I know for sure if you have a stock car with AC, um, the ATI pulley will fit with the stock AC belt with, it'll be tight, but it'll fit on that belt. And I know that because my buddy Kyle Davis told me it works and I trust the man. So, and he has AC, so that, that worked just fine. Um, but for us, we're gonna go ahead and test out some belts and see which one fits. Um, but right now Rob is working on getting the power steering um, pulley also removed off that belt so that we can go ahead and get to the pulley and remove that do we have a harmonic dampener puller or are we just going to do yeah we're just going to do, do the method that yeah. Yeah, we're not going back i mean it's, right. there's it's no point well. it's, it is what it is <laughs> we don't need it we, we got got extra ones that crap we got plenty of them over there we got a motor over there we can take it off if we need to um so first things first we're gonna have to assemble this this one actually came not assembled so i've actually ordered them before and they come assembled but this one did not let me show you what's in the package so it comes with instructions as well but as men we don't read instructions so those go over there it's all self-explanatory i'm sure we can figure this out fast forward to like 20 minutes from now where we don't know how to figure it out so stickers and stuff so i actually read the instructions it actually says to use this specific thread locker um this is loctite two, uh medium grade 242 so it definitely says to use this one and then it also says to use a specific torx tp40 can you open that for me rob tp40 torx bit um the reason for that being is it uses tp40 torx bits um don't use your standard torx bit the tp40 the torx plus actually has come on focus there you go focus there you go focused so it actually uses has wider edges to it it, it says in the instructions if you use a standard uh, torx bit you will damage the bolt and then it will be not serviceable which means once you damage the ends of it it probably be impossible to go ahead and remove the bolts from it and have it rebuilt if you ever need to with the ati pulley i understand that to rebuild it you probably never rebuild it because it'll probably last that long i know uh, unless you guys do circle track racing and then i'm sure every season you can send it off to get rebuilt but even then it might be a little excessive but anyway you're gonna need a tp40 bit you're gonna need that loctite so back in the bag so here are the bolts that it comes with and i, th I think these have a little bit of thread locker on them do they no they don't so here's the hub portion and then the main pulley parts right here action shots right here Thank you, Robert. so we're gonna go ahead and assemble it I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to assemble it because there is a specific way to assemble this thing and we're gonna do that now all right just to show you guys there is a specific way to put this together there's actually a dimple on this pulley let's see if the camera can catch it see how close I can get oh ah there it is you see that little dimple above that hole that top one right there let's see if I can get my finger on it no, I can't. I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time, but it's okay. But you'll see it. you see it's right there. Bam! That little dimple. So that one actually is to line up with 
the offset dimple that's on the pulley and it's marked right there. So you have to make sure both of those are lined up and it's going into the correct hole and actually so you don't mess it up, it actually has it on the back too. So there you see, that dimple, you're gonna match up with the dimple on the actually crank portion of it. And just to make sure, for us, the dimple is this one right here at the top. And that's gonna go, go ahead, cameraman. So, that's the dimple right there. This is the offset dimple. Bam, that's it. That's how it's gonna go. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite, the one they recommended again, on this, and then I'm gonna get that through. So as you just saw, I put it together. What I ended up doing is, per the instructions that I didn't read, it said 16 foot-pounds per bolt. I aligned the holes, of course, or the little divots that I showed you guys. I lined those up, 16 foot-pounds per bolt. I went, and put, I went ahead and put thread locker on each one of them. I went crisscross pattern. So if I did this one, I did this one, and then this one moved it over and then if I did this one I did this one and this one and so on and so forth and then I just after I finished all of them I just went around in a circular pattern and tested them all out and make sure everything was good so um, 16 foot pounds that's what it is Robert already took the 27 millimeter off for his crank pulley and so we're gonna go ahead and remove that we're gonna get that uh, power steering built off and then we'll get this right on <laughs> so Rob's going ahead and pulling away at this and did it break already? I already snapped a little lip off. Ah, uh, it's all right. That means it was old and it was time for it to go. Watch your camera. <laughs> all right, there you go. That's good. You're, you're in a good spot, Rob. So Rob's just putting the pry bar behind it and just we're just gonna go from side to side and wiggle it out slowly. It'll come out. But as you can see, that damper's pretty old. What ends up happening with these um, stock uh, crank pulleys as well, they'll separate after a while and we'll show it to you once it comes off it'll actually separate between the rubber that it has as, as a as a damper and the outside ring of it so once robert gets it off we'll start getting the other one back on so we went ahead and stacked the old crank pulley over the new ati damper um, as you can see the ati damper is about uh, me and Robert deduced about what a quarter of an inch, Rob. Well, I mean, bigger on know, each side, so yeah. half an inch total. Yeah. So that's why it would require a larger belt. But as you can see, we did damage the stock one, getting it out, prying it off. But it came out pretty easy. So again, what ends up happening with these old stock ones is a lot of times I've seen guys where it separates the outside ring from the inside ring. It'll separate the rubber that it, that's pretty much the dampener on it, pretty much destroys itself. But this one, again, is fully rebuildable. So we're going to have, again, it's assembled, it's ready to go. We're going to find out if the belt we have will work. And if it does, then we'll go for a road test. Um, I did want to show you guys one thing. We're, we're talking everything is spec because it's really important to make sure that everything is put on the way it should have been, even from factory. The belt that we have that we're going to try first is a Napa belt. What's the part number on the Rob, read that off to me. It's a uh, 060331. So we're gonna go ahead and try that first. And again, that's for no air conditioning. Well, they, they list the uh, non-air conditioning uh, belt as a, a 327. So this one's actually a little bit longer than that one. So, uh, and it, it has play in it. So we're hoping that it will fit. If not, we have a couple longer ones that we're gonna try. So technically the, the 27 would be the actual non-AC replacement. The, yes. And this one's a little bit larger than that. So we're hoping this one will be like the fit without even having to go with the other ones. But we have backups. You have backups, you bought yes. some extra ones, Robert. Right. So we're good, we're prepared, and then we can have a Corky's lunch. So let's go ahead and continue with the install. All right, so one of the important things uh, to do is, again, you don't want to torque anything that's not to spec. So the crank pulley is very essential that you torque it down a spec. One of the things that I've noticed is a lot of people don't want to go ahead and look things up anymore. All the information is there for you to find. You can find it on Google. I know what the torque spec is, but I just want to show you guys how easy it is to find it before you go ahead and post it on Facebook, which takes you longer to post and wait for somebody to reply. In that time, you could already be having a sandwich by the time you're already done finding the information. So, for you millennials out there, let's go ahead and use Google. B13 SR20 crank pulley torque spec. Ah, okay. So here are the results. Can you see that, Rob? You see the results there? 
Or is it too blurry? Yeah, it looks okay, I think. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. I'm gonna go with Nissan Forums. Uh, that looks good. Oh, look, sr20forum.com. Us old school guys know what that is. Look, this guy apparently posted all the torque specs you need. Let's go ahead and kick. Oh, look, right there it says pulley to crankshaft bolt, 105 to 112 foot pounds. See how easy that was? That was stupid easy. And that's actually correct because I know it to be anywhere between 105 and 112 foot pounds. So that's what we're going to torque it to. Again, use Google, use Siri, use Alexa, use Cortana use your mama find the torque specs find the information before you go ahead and post and waste everybody else's time and then you'll have someone like me tell you google is your friend that's it that's my psa for today now let's keep installing because we're already down here and we're probably not taking this ati pulley off for a long time we're gonna go ahead and replace the front main seal as well. It's not very hard to remove, but one thing I will tell you, there is gonna be a flat washer behind this, uh, this seal. Don't damage that. That's actually to stop the seal from going too far in. So take care of that, that, that flat washer that's behind it. So here's the part number for the new one because we love OEM parts around here. So one thing I noticed is oh, Nissan used to make them brown. This one's actually an original one uh, that was replaced by Rob years ago when he installed the, the motor in the car. That's brown, but now they're black. So we're going to go ahead and have Black Rob install his black seal. Kinks in it. That's when I hammered it flat again. <laughs> so here's that shim, that metal washer that we, uh, we were talking about earlier. Robert, a long time ago, did not know it was back there and he kind of he kind of he kind of had to work it work it flat but again it's perfectly fine it's flat enough i guess so again don't damage this keep this in there this is just so that that um that front main doesn't go in too far you don't want to go too deep sometimes too deep is <laughs> it's not a good thing uh, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to explain that rob so you don't want to push it in too deep uh, if, you, if you push it in too deep again it's, it's not meant to go that far so this is definitely a got nice uh keep safe to definitely not to go do that so here you go Rob go ahead and put that so you don't go too deep Rob you got the seal in now you just gotta tap it flat a little tappa 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 teacher my shoes are making noise he just got a big socket on the end I know the camera can't catch the light very well but all he has is like there you go kind of see it there enough to go ahead and just tap it in flat again that that washer in the back will keep it from going too far but we always like to stay flat with the surface and then he'd be good to go all right so the pulley's in uh we went ahead and pulled it all the way in it's all good now rob's gonna go ahead and torque it we're gonna go with 112 foot pounds as i stated and i found on google before there's a pulley oh come on give me there you go so it's all in everything went in nice and smooth no hiccups right rob yeah wink <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press on the brakes I'm gonna go ahead and put the car in gear just to hold it enough for Rob to go ahead and get that click action on that torque wrench and we should be all right so let's go ahead and do that now and then on to the next so the belt that Robert had was too short and the new belt that he got was too long so we're gonna have to make a run to Napa and try to go find a belt that fits just right so we'll get something in between both sizes we might get two belts just to make sure and then we'll let you guys know what part it is. So off to Napa we go. All right, so after going to one Napa, they didn't have the part numbers that we needed. We went to we went a to second Napa. First. Oh yeah, we went to O'Reilly to return the yeah. crap that they gave us. And they, they didn't have shit. Yeah, they didn't have crap for us. So we went to Napa, we went to their main warehouse here in Ontario, Canada. And uh, this is what we got. We got a couple sizes up. We're hoping this fits. We got a 60345, and I think we got a 50 oh, and a 6034. So we're gonna try these two. Hopefully one of these two fits. But first, we're gonna go by Farmer Boys. We're gonna have some onion rings because uh, they disagree with Rob. And then we're gonna get back to work. And this uh, one hour job has turned into a five hour job because we gotta eat and we spend a lot of time on the road, but we're gonna get it done. So, and then we'll have a road test. And uh, then I'll go home. And that's it, Rob. The, the, the journey's over. Right, yeah. The journey's over after that. All right, back to work. Right, 
told you, I go, this one's a little longer than the, than the non-AC car, and it's going to have slack. <laughs> Damn it. Don't you hate that shit? I do. We just wasted three hours looking for a belt that we didn't need to find. Because the two belts that we picked up at Napa, what we, well, what we wanted essentially was to get a little more adjustment out of um, the belts and not be like at the bottom of the adjustment bolt. So um, those are too big. So the next size up they had was that part number right there. And after that, the other one they had was this part number right here. Those are the part numbers. Don't buy those. Buy the one that I showed you earlier in the video where it was the one that Robert already had in the car. That one is pretty much at the bottom of its adjustment. I don't know if you can see it there. Right there. Pretty much right at the bottom. I think we have maybe a quarter of an inch of adjustment more, but it goes on. It works and we're gonna use that going forward. So at least we got farmer boys out of it, Rob. Yep. So we got that, we got some bomb onion rings that are giving me the one-two punch right now in the stomach. But it's all right, we're gonna get through it. Oh, these are so bad, Rob. We got something Dude, coming for those. You're gonna have something for that one-two punch thing too. What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Like Homer Simpson or something. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody getting socked in the stomach. I, I, my stomach feels like Tatum versus Homer Simpson in that one battle. There's Tatum showboating for the crowd. <laughs> Seconds in the K20. That's all right. Look out! Watch out! You went on that on that dig acceleration, and, and it felt really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like it's almost like it's breaking in. Like it's maybe because of the, the the car's warmed up, you know. Uh -huh. But like it just feels really really smooth. Worth the upgrade. Oh yeah. So we drove the car back to Napa because we had to go return those belts and we actually figured a couple of things out while we were at Napa. So it turns out that the 331 belt that we had, mm -hmm. 060331, whatever it is, 25 dash 060331, um, is 854 millimeters in outer diameter. So the 060338 that she gave us was 873 millimeters of outer diameter. So it's almost 20 millimeters larger. And that just gave us too much slack. We were at the top of the adjustment bolt for the alternator and it was way too much. It was the 340 that we had. So it was even Also, bigger. we even had the three, oh, so we left the 338. Right. And we got the 340 that was even bigger than that. Yeah. So it was in any case, it was too big. So the 25 dash 0603 four zero was too large and the uh zero six zero three three eight was too large and while i was there and she turned around karen you know who you are i was able to take snapshots of all the part numbers and look them up on rockauto.com um and i actually found the belt it's, it's a kca no not a kca it's a 25 dash zero six zero three three five and that three three five is actually 864 millimeters in diameter 
And if I'm wrong, I'll have a correction up here because I ordered it on Rock Auto. I'll check it later. So that belt looks like it might be the sweet spot between the one that was too long, which is the one that, the one that ends in 4-0 that Rob had, and the, the one that ends in 3-1, which is the one that's actually in the car now that's working. That's pretty much maybe like a quarter of an inch from being at the end of that uh, adjustment bolt. So I'll be the guinea pig for that one and then I'll put that in my car and if it works then Rob will switch to that belt uh, the next time he needs to replace his belt because for now everything seems fine and what's great about it I don't know if uh, uh, you guys were able to hear over some of the wind noise but what we were talking about the car is like my impressions as a as a passenger the first thing I noticed is just the reduction in vibration in the car overall Robert said he felt like the car was back on the inserts, the ES inserts that he had on his stock OEM mounts. Uh, Protheans usually give off a lot more vibration, but the, the damper actually reduced a lot of that vibration. Um, second thing was, I noticed that when he was downshifting, I didn't feel the jarring motion of the motor, uh, like when the clutch engaged in that downshift. It was a really smooth downshift, it really was. That was the second thing I noticed. The third thing I noticed is acceleration. Not like it accelerated any faster or any better, just so smooth. The motor felt a lot smoother. It even sounded a little bit different almost, where it was just going up the RPM. It, it just, it just, it sounded, maybe it's just all in my head, but the facts say it's probably not because this is what the ATI damper is supposed to do. And what we concluded was, um, talking with Rob, is if this damper more than likely less impacts the internals while you're driving it and for us who are going to road race quite a bit and we're up up shifting and down shifting um, it would probably assist in keeping our motors longevity life a lot longer so i'm asked robert what his impressions are robert what you think I know you, like, I know you hate being on camera and this is why i'm doing it well basically just to reiterate what uh Juan said it, it the car did feel smoother felt like more linear uh, in between shifts like you said you don't feel like a uh, like a jar or like a twitch in the motor and that uh, part surprised me actually the yeah. most because I didn't right. think it would do that right and then um, and just all the way to, to redline we I was able to take a couple times redline and it felt it felt really smooth uh, you might not notice it as much at, at idle uh, I did a little bit, but not as much as when it's actually accelerating and under load is, is when you, when I felt the, the smoothness of, of of the motor. And the other thing was, Rob, too, remember, like, when, when you kind of get on the throttle and get off the throttle, you don't feel... Right. And, I mean, that that I'm sure part of it is is the the dampener, and then part of it is probably the uh, the mounts that we put in, the proteins. Yeah, but, that's true. But I think that, yeah, a lot of it has to do with the dampener. Yeah. All right. Good mod, bad mod, Good worth mod, it? Worth the money. It's just for safety, yeah. really. It's for longevity. So again, say bye, Rob. Bye. I'll say bye, Rob. Peace out, thanks. Like and subscribe if you like videos like this. Again, I appreciate you guys. And then, oh man, I think I was supposed to pick a winner for the- Hey, there you are. Hey, you give me like a chop, you back. People who know.